Imbolc is the second pagan Sabbath and a day in the middle of winter. It falls on the 1st of February. This word comes from an old Irish expression Imbolc, which literally means in the belly. Namely, ewes get pregnant at winter. After lambing, they are lactating, which is why it was the first time after a long period of cold and darkness that people could drink sheep milk. For a peasant, it was one of the first signs of a new spring. A solar aspect It is a day in the middle of winter. Sun is slowly but steadily moving upward. Days are visibly longer compared to Yule. Forces of chaos are still dominant, but weaker with each day passing. We celebrate the growth of the sun's strength. A divine aspect. Mother Goddess is now completely recovered from giving a birth. We imagine her as a young mother who has returned to her day-to-day -day activities. Horned God is not a newborn baby anymore, but a little boy. We can imagine him as a five-year-old. Like every other child, he is innocent, playful and joyful. However, he is still dependent on his mother's care. An agricultural aspect. Beneath the snow, nature is slowly awakening. The first signs of spring are visible. Life persists, fights back, and breaks out over the frozen ground. Seeds start to germinate. Early blooming plants suddenly appear, such as primroses, violets, and snowdrops. Imbolc is the beginning of the agricultural season of sowing, which will last for three upcoming months. A mystery aspect. Inspiration is the basic mystery of Imbolc. It is a perfect time for the spiritual revival of an individual and community. Pagans evoke the goddess Brigid, who arouses creativity, art, talents, and development of unexplored inner potentials. A person seeks enlightenment and cognizance, which is why he or she must govern necessary skills and mental abilities. Cleanliness, clarity, purity, and rejection of old patterns and binding ties are another very important mystery of this Sabbath which is strongly reflected on the Imbolc lore. At this festival, we are primarily letting go of accumulated emotions. We are dealing with problems and issues, so we use magic and subtle energies to destroy them. We are throwing away all the obstructions, debts, poor company, bad habits, negative energies and entities. Imbolc is special because the mystery of fertility is not explicit. However, the purport of purification at all levels is creating space for new fruits. This is why it is sometimes said that Imbolc is a menstruation of the will of the year, which is totally logical because its opposite Sabbath is Lemus, which is the first harvest, which corresponds to ovulation. That is why Imbolc is specifically connected with female mysteries. The goddess Brigid awakes female energy. She is goddess maiden, who is still not a mother, but after her first period she becomes aware of her biological potentials that one day she can become one. History of Imbolc the earliest Irish records on Imbolc date back to the 10th century. It is described as a family festival at which people celebrate lambing. Its main features are cleaning homes and hearths, 
purification with the element of fire and lighting candles. People would drink sheep milk and evoke health and healing by circumambulating a well living offerings. Brigid is a Celtic goddess of fire, crop fertility, livestock, healing, wisdom, knowledge, inspiration, art, especially poetry, and a blacksmith's craft. A young village girl would act her part. Peasants will bring her to the stable where they had prepared a bed of straw for her next to a fireplace so that she could sleep over in a cozy warm place. A bed was decorated with colorful ribbons and sprinkled with sheep milk. Before going to sleep, she would be presented with gifts, while she would bless them all. Brigid is the goddess maiden who rules from Imbolc to Lamas. The other half of the year is ruled by the goddess Crone named Kalyach. They are two facets of the same goddess. While Brigid comes to the fields on Imbolc and melts snow with her white fiery stick, Kalyach will go to the woods to collect some firewood so that she could keep herself warm in the coming weeks. People might see her in the form of a huge bird flying around the woods and carrying sticks in her beak. But there's a catch. She will do so only if the weather is bright because sun rays will wake her up. It means that winter will last a good while longer. However, if the weather had been foul and cloudy, she would have stayed asleep and consequently consumed all her remaining firewood, which is why the winter is almost over. Another variant of the same myth says that Brigid's snake will crawl from her hole to check the weather, while in the latter European folklore a badger will come out of hibernation. If it saw its shadow, it would fearfully scurry back into the bed and six more weeks of winter would result. If it didn't see its shadow, winter would soon come to an end. This is why the weather forecast is another Imbolc custom. Of course, this is the origin of the Groundhog Day celebrated on the 2nd of February in the US and Canada. The most popular such event is held in the town of Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. The famous groundhog Punxsutawney Phil will emerge from his temporary home at sunrise. Again, if Phil sees his shadow and returns to his hole, he has just predicted six more weeks of winter. From the 13th to the 15th of February, Romans were observing ancient, possibly even pre-Roman fertility festival called Lupercalia, dedicated to the pastoral deity Lupercus, who is sometimes identified with the god Faunus, equivalent of the Greek Pan. Its purpose was a spiritual purification of the city, protection from evil spirits and the release of fertility and health. Roman priests, Luperci, would wear goatskin, run the streets and whip passers-by with goatskin whips. Thus priests would energetically purify them, while girls would deliberately approach them to get a blessing of fertility. Actually, Lupercalia assimilated the Etruscan festival of Februa, which simply means purification. The Imbolc Lore Imbolc celebration begins the day before, on the 31st of January. After breakfast, pre-spring house cleaning starts, from attic to basement. Pagans sweep and wash floors, clean walls, wardrobes, shelves, kitchen, bathroom, everything. A special attention is given to the cleaning of a house hearth. Fire will be lit only later on, after sunset. Also, carpets will be beaten on the snow. 
After the cleansing, all the household members will take a bath and put fresh clean clothes. Bridget's Eve starts with the sunset and lasts until the Imbolc morning. Parents will bless the hearth and sprinkle it with water. Another custom is making a Bridget's doll-like figure, called Bridjog in Irish, as well as the Bridget's bed. Doll is usually made from corn, oat and straw. It can be decorated with white clothes, silver and crystals. The youngest child will put the doll to the bed and cover it with a little blanket. Lighting of candles is the central part of the Bridget's Eve celebration. Candles burn with a small tamed flame which represents a purity and innocence of the child God. During late winter, sun is still weak. Although it keeps heating the ground, days are still cold, especially nights. Therefore, with candles we praise the child God and help the sun to endure on its journey. We chase away darkness and coldness of winter and activate the positive energy of a cleansed home. Family members will walk through the entire home ringing handbells, light the white and silver candles on windows and the household shrine, on the threshold, balconies, in the courtyard and backyard. One big white candle can be lit on the fireplace. That one is called the Bridget's Candle. Bridget's Cross is a symbol of the young sun which slowly breaks through the zodiac and rushes to warmer days. Typically, it has four arms tied at the ends and a woven square in the middle. Its four arms symbolize the will of the year. After the lighting of candles, all family members will make Bridget's crosses from woven rushes, sedge, straw, or even from paper. Once they are crafted, everyone will consecrate his or her cross by circulating 13 times over the flame of the Bridget's candle. Everyone can put the cross in some special place in the house, at the entrance door, beside the fireplace, in stables, on yard trees, shrine or altar. We can conclude that the Bridget's cross also has apotropaic properties. The rest of evening is dedicated to art. Household members will get warm and sing, play music, read poetry or fairy tales, or simply have fun. On the Imbolc morning, family will get out and check the weather. If it is fall, they will rejoice because it means the winter is coming to an end. If not, they will enjoy the beautiful day. The youngest child will awake Bridget's doll and usually carry it around the neck all day long. Then they will decorate the plow. The oldest person will bless it and sprinkle it with water or some drink, wishing for the successful harvest. Children will pull it going door to door and neighbors will give them candies. When they return, they will leave it by the front door. After breakfast, the family will take a walk to the woods and countryside, searching for the first signs of spring. When they return home, they will retell all their impressions. Can we feel the coming of spring? Did anyone see a snowdrop, violet, primrose or any other sign? A Christian Interpretation of Imbolc As Bridget was a patron goddess of Ireland, the Catholic Church couldn't just label her as heresy. Therefore, the Church declared her as saint. She became Saint Bridget, one of three Ireland's patron saints. She is described as a Catholic nun who performed many miracles, living in the town of Kildare in the Eastern Ireland in the 5th and 6th century. There are no many information on her life. Actually, 
it is not even sure that she was a real person. Even if she was, it is obvious that since the 6th century she was syncretized with the famous Celtic goddess. Ancient Celts were maintaining the Bridget's sacred fire in Kildare. Later on, Christians have built the Cathedral Church of St. Bridget on the same spot, although people still call it the Fire Temple. In the Old Testament, it is prescribed that after giving birth to a male child, women shall purify themselves for 40 days. If it were a firstborn son, he was considered as the god's property, so his parents had to bring him into the temple, present him to the Lord, and redeem him by sacrificing a lamb and a pigeon or turtle dove. By the way, if it were a daughter, woman had to purify herself for 80 days. In the New Testament, it is described that Jesus' parents, Joseph and Mary, 40 days after his birthday, brought him to the temple in Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. After the church had introduced Christmas in the 4th century, on the 25th of December, the 40th day from Christmas fell on the 2nd of February. Pope Gelasius I, from the 5th century, was a notorious persecutor of paganism. He finally suppressed the ancient Roman festival of the Lupercalia after a long contest, but also replaced it with the Feast of the Purification of the Blessed Virgin Mary, exactly on the 40th day from Christmas, on the 2nd of February, which perfectly coincided with the meaning of both Lupercalia and Imbolc. It was only in the 1969 when Pope Paul VI replaced the name of that festival with a new one, Presentation of the Lord. As Celtic pagans were lighting candles for Bridget on Imbolc, church retained that custom, so that eventually this Christian holiday got a popular name, Candlemas, or Festum Candelarum in Latin. The pagan custom of carrying the Bridget's flame was replaced with the Catholic procession with candles. On that day, a priest will bless candles for the upcoming liturgical year. Moreover, the next day, or the 3rd of February, known as the Feast of St. Blaise, the blessing of the throats is performed, usually with two crossed candles. In this way, the church has assimilated another pagan festival and shifted for one day.